بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه اللهم تقبل منا طاعتنا يا كريم يا رحمن يا رحيم الحمد لله for this tremendous blessing of Allah سبحانه وتعالى and I believe that all of you you are feeling the difference between a few days ago and these very days that we live in the blessing of Ramadan. You can feel that the shaitan is locked because you have control. There's a lot of things that you can you say, I'm not going to do it. And you have the courage and you have the strength and you truly, you don't do it. But this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessing uh, upon us. Have we to continue on this path, we're trying, insha'Allah ta'ala, all together to work on deepening our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the greatest gift that you honor yourself with. And this is what is going to help you to maintain the piety, the taqwa that you will be gaining, insha'Allah, in Ramadan. We have been talking about the types of the hearts. And we know the type of the heart we have. To be modest, we have that sick heart. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about those hypocrites, قَالَ زَادَهُمْ مَرَضْ Increase their illness. But you, you are in Ramadan. Allah, inshaAllah, is going to cure your heart. We were talking about the purification. We were talking about that motivation or the eagerness or the drive will help you to be on the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like the case of Ibrahim and that miracle, that it's very miracle that you can see every time you go to the haram and the Prophet sallallahu make the sunnah of the tawaf to be behind maqam Ibrahim to help you remind how much you need to be closer to Allah and how much you, be, you need to be longing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The difference between a person who does a passive worship and between someone making a dynamic uh, worship is like the difference, subhanAllah, between the, uh, the earth and the, uh, and the sky. It's a big difference. It's a big difference. A person who's passive, he does not feel anything. The person who's active, he always going to be seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala walking him into the path taking his hand and her hand toward the success. One of the important aspects today I would like to share with you, which is, as we striving in this life, and we've been hit by calamities from here, by difficulty from here, by people, you know, hurting you, by others, subhanAllah, the way you want to gain your income, the way you want to be having a successful future and so on. So everyone is striving. But the late, latest of the striving or the end of the striving want to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, one should be thinking, what will be the ride that I need to ride in this life to secure myself? What will be the vessel that I should be in as a fortress to help me and protect me and whatever difficulty like hit me, I will be in a way being stable and firm on my path. This vessel is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a very special mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if you try to give a definition to the mercy of Allah, the mercy of Allah is the comprehensive of every good you can imagine. The mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you in your life, Mercy of Allah to help you in your guidance. Mercy of Allah to help you get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, this mercy as a vessel, we need to know what are the characteristics to help us be our transportation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can we gain it? How can we be inside the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Two main characteristics. Two main characteristics. The first one, is to truly, sincerely seeking for the mercy of Allah, which then make you to work hard and do everything that you want to have and put all your effort, what you mean do everything you want to have, put your effort first 
If you want to go to Allah, then make that first step. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come to you in double step. So put your effort and at the maximum of your effort, then when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will see that you have a proof of sincerity, that's when the rahmah is going to come. The example from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the people of the cave, they left their homes. They left the luxurious homes. They left the palace. As in the narration, they were, you know, children or belonging to high society. Why they left? Because they seeking to protect their deen. They seeking to protect their oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is their reason of existence. And then, subhanAllah, look when they ask for the rahm. When they came at the cave, رَبَّنَا آتِنَا مِنْ لَدُونْكَ رَحْمَةً وَهَيِّئْ لَنَا مِنْ أَمْرِنَا رَشَدًا So, subhanAllah, after you do the effort, you ask for the rahm of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After you do the effort, you ask, therefore, say, travel to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, qala id qamu, zidnahum hubda, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, we increase them in guidance after you make the first step. In tansurullaha yansurkum, wa yuthabbit aqdamakum. If you help in the cause of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you, and then will give you more, the firmness on the path. So this is the first thing. If you want the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do not be passive, you have to be active. If you want khushu into the salah, start asking khushu and start to make that effort. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring you khushu. If you want to be a generous person, start to really make that effort to give the first dollar and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you to soften your heart because you're going to see the, the evidence, what dalail, the evidence that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you to compensate all what you give. If you want to have knowledge, get the first book and start to read, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you to get the knowledge. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide you to those teachers who help you to learn. And this is subhanAllah how to get the rahmah of Allah. The second item and characteristic, which is why you asking the rahmah of Allah? What is the purpose of asking the rahmah? If the people asking the rahmah of Allah for the worldly life, then it's not going to be suitable to the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you entertain in this life without knowing your own purpose of your life. Because your purpose of your life is to be successful in the hereafter. Then when someone subhanAllah is inflicted with difficulty, and this is we said it many times, is extracted from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what are you going to seek? You ask the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you maintain your faith to help you maintain your trust in Allah. Because look, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he saw that lady screaming when she had lost someone, he told her, have been patient. He told them, what do you know about patience? Then when they told her, it's Rasulullah Sallallahu and she came to apologize, he told her, the Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the patience is at the first shock. Because when we are shocked, when we are inflicted, the first thing that you need to ask is, Allah, give me firmness. Before that you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have the relief, to solve you, to help you, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you the firmness on the path. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to preserve your trust in Him. Because all what you need that Allah to be with you. Because if you say, why ya Allah this is happening to me? Then you turn away from Allah. When you say, why these people are having everything good except us Muslim, we are down and everything, you're going to have Allah turn away from you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us a great example and many examples in the Quran. However, when it comes to the difficulty, like in Surah Al-Ahzab, قَالَ إِذْ زَغَتُ الْأَبْصَارُ وَبَلَغَتُ الْقُلُوبُ الْحَنَاجِرَ وَتَظُنُّونَ بِاللَّهِ الظُّنُونَ I mean, the eyes are shifted and the heart are beating to the point that they can feel it in their throat and they were like, subhanAllah, in deep fear. This is the companion of the one Allah Ta'ala alayhim, among them the cream of the companion. However, in the end, you'll find two groups. A group, they were doubting Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, qal, يَعِدُنُ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ إِلَّا غُرُورَ What are they? Uh, promise us, Allah and His Messenger, delusion. Huh? Delusion. When the believers, 
they've been asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have that firmness. What they said, قَالَ هَذَا مَا وَعَدَنَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ وَصَدَقَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ وَصَدَقَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ So at every difficulty, if you stand firm and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to preserve your, your trust in Him subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's how you're going to have the vessel of the rahmah to be, insha'Allah, your transportation in this life. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Ahzab exactly, قال, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا You have in the Prophet sallallahu the greatest of the role model. لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرُ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا Those who are seeking to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to be successful in the hereafter and they remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala much. قَالَ وَلَمَّا رَأَى الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الْأَحْزَبَ And then when the believer, they saw the confederate army. Subhanallah, this is who their example is, the Prophet sallallahu هَذَا مَا وَعَدَنَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُ they are about to be defeated. They are about to be exterminated. But as they know that they have their trust in Allah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never let them down. Never. قَالَ هَذَا مَا وَعَدَنَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ وَصَدَقَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ وَمَا زَادَهُمْ إِلَّا إِيمَانًا وَتَسْلِمًا It increased them in iman. It increased them in firmness. Therefore, when you have a shortage of income, Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you preserve your trust in Him because He is a razzaq. When you have sickness, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you still trusting in Him and holding fast because He is a shafi. When you are defeated, He is a nasir. And all of that, all of that, help you to gain that ma'iyah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam every time has uh, a difficulty. إذا كربه كرب قال برحمتك أستغيث يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك أستغيث With your mercy, ya Allah, I'm asking, I'm holding fast and أستغيث, I'm asking the help. So the rahmah is the vessel. But how to get it? Not by asking it for the dunya. In Ramadan, train to ask it for preserving your trust and help you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the first steps then let's have our uh, worship to be uh, dynamic inshallah and please make dua for Muhammad Hassan brother Muhammad Hassan all of you know especially who come uh, every day he's always praying on this side He's uh, getting a surgery, a tumor on his head. And that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and yashfiya. Allahumma yashfihi shifa'an la yugadiru sakhma. Allahumma ya rabb al-nas. Ya ilahana ya khaliqana. Ya shafi ya rabb al-nas. Yashfihi ya arham al-rahimin. Allahumma yashfihi ya arham al-rahimin. Allahumma dhab al-ba'sa anhu ya karimu ya rahmanu ya rahim. Wa salli allahumma wa barik ala sayyidina Muhammad. وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما وإلى الصلاة يرحمكم